what we're teaching our people is we gotta repent. We gotta come back to him wholeheartedly. Like, Christianity can teach you certain things that are, that are good, right? I think Christianity has the faith thing down pat, you know, to an extent, loving people and being nice, you know, but it's missing a lot. And it's missing, for our people, the things that is really missing is the discipline and the structure and the order of our community, right? Let me give you, uh, give you a quick precept. Yep. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse uh, 1. Hear ye children, uh, the instruction of a father, right. and attend to no understanding. Right, so it's saying, hear ye children, talking about the children of Israel, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the instruction of a father, God is our father, he gave us instruction. Right. Verse 2. For I give you good doctrine. He gives us good doctrine. Now, what is the doctrine of God? Forsake ye not my law. The laws of God is the doctrine that we're supposed to be following. Now, we go into the church. I'm not sure your church, but I'll just say in general, we go into the Christian church that tells us we don't have to keep the laws anymore. You say, what, what, what are the two things they tell you you got to do? Say again. They, they normally tell you what? what love, love your neighbor. Right? And what else? And love God. Right? They'll tell you to do those two things pretty much and that's it. Right? But this is the law is the doctrine. So now, what does it look like for me to love my neighbor? If I love my neighbor, I wouldn't sleep with his wife, right? That would be love and that's a commandment. So I can't just say love my neighbor like, oh, I love you. There's some actions behind it. I wouldn't steal from you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with your wife. I wouldn't try to covet your possessions, you know, so forth and so on. Loving God, I'm not going to go and celebrate Easter, which is the celebration of a, of a pagan God. Right. I'm not going to celebrate Christmas, which is the worship of a pagan God. Right. I'm going to follow the commandments that he gave me, That's right. which was to be Passover, Tabernacle. We have our own feast days and our own culture and heritage in the Bible. That's right. Right? So as a people, we lost that, that direction that way. And what's happened now is that our people don't, they, they basically have uh, either become uh, um, scared of the Bible by saying, man, we've been doing this thing for all this time and ain't nothing happening. But the reason why it's not happening is because we've been using this the wrong way. Right? We got to use it the correct way. If we take in a, in a, and apply the laws of God into our community, I don't know if you saw this the other night, couple of, it was actually broad daylight actually, it was like two days ago. It was a 12 to 13, I think a 14 year old. They pistol whipped another kid in the street and then the 13, 14 year old pulled the Draco out of his pants. And they're, they're, they're pistol whipping him on the streets, broad daylight. And then they run off. Now, if we had these laws implemented, Whatever beef that those two had going on, it would have been squashed. And the weapons wouldn't have been pulled on one another because the, those, those, those young men would have been taught how to be young men. Right. Whenever I have a beef with you, I gotta come to you with my beef. Yo, man, I don't like the way you did X, Y, and Z. You know, man, I, wasn't, I, I didn't mean it that way. Oh, okay, so it's just a misunderstanding. Let's squash this, yo. Boom, we done. Versus, I'm gonna let that beef continue to, uh, to build up in the streets, and then when I see you, it's on sight. And now we're fighting and killing each other at 11 and 12 and 13 years old, right? But when we look at it, God said this was gonna happen to our people. That we were gonna live short lives, we were gonna hate each other, we were gonna hate him, right? And we were gonna let our enemies rule over top of him. That's what you see right now, you know what I'm saying? So we're talking true repentance, right? And teaching our people how to get everlasting life, which is rulership on, on the earth. And that's by keeping those commandments. And that's how, we, you know, if you ever heard the verse that says, the kingdom's in you, you ever heard that verse? It's saying because by you keeping the commandments, you're gonna manifest the next kingdom to come. And you're gonna be in rulership of that kingdom. If you don't do it, the enemy's gonna keep ruled over top of you. You know what I'm saying? You got a precept for the brother? No, The book of Matthew. It's the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse uh, 16. Uh -huh. And behold, one came and said unto him, good master. Right. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Right, so what brothers asking the Messiah, who the world calls Jesus, said, what do I have to do to get eternal life? What? Verse 17, uh -huh. and he said unto him, why callest me thou good? Right. There is none good but one, that is God. Right. But if 
But if thou will enter into life, you're going to enter into this life. Keep the commandments. You got to keep the commandments. There's no other way for you to enter into life except for keeping the commandments. So now we got to think if we've been taught not to keep the commandments by the leadership inside of our churches, by the leadership even inside of the Muslim mosque, right? It's for a reason. And so our people stay in this in this predicament that they're in, and our enemies can continue to rule over top of them. Right? This is a biblical concept that our enemies have known for a long time. As long as we sin, breaking the commandments is a sin, their, their, their rulership is going to continue to keep going. This is the book of First John chapter 2 and verse 3. It says, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, right. and the truth is not in him. Right, so if we say we know God, if we're not keeping the commandments, then God, then God will look at us as a liar. Like, you say you know me, but the only way you can know me is by doing the things that I like. So if you're not doing the things that I like, then I don't really know you, man. And you must be a liar, because I'm not down with that situation. You know what I'm saying? So what's God going to do? Leave us stuck in this situation, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, sometimes, like, I know, like, me, <clears throat> with my with my children, I might let them just struggle with something. I told you what you should do, what you need to do. But because you don't want to listen, I'm just going to let you sit right there and get messed for a little bit and think it out. Until you get so frustrated, what, you, what are they going to do? Daddy, I can't figure this out. What did I tell you to do? You told me to do X, Y, did you do that? No, I didn't. Right? We got the answers. We got the answers to the questions. We got the whole game plan right here. A lot of people are so hard-headed, man. We, we, just, we, just, we just push them back. Because we don't want that structure and discipline in our life. We don't want somebody to come to tell us, you can't eat shrimp. You can't eat no pork. No crab, no lobster. You can't celebrate Christmas and Easter or your, or your birthday. We don't want to hear that. We just want to do whatever we want to do and think that God is going to reward us for doing whatever we want to do. That's against him. The book of Luke, chapter 15, um, start at verse 15. Uh -huh. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent uh, him into his fields to feed swine. And he uh, would fain have filled his belly, belly with husks uh, that swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned. Man, all we got to do right now is go to the father and tell him that we sinned. Right. You got to confess it. We were wrong. We were wrong. We sinned. This ain't working. It ain't been working for 500 years in America. It ain't been working. So now that we do that, Father, I'm just asking for you to forgive me, right? I believe in, I believe in, your, uh, in you. I believe in your son. I'm going to start keeping these commandments. Can you give me the direction? And then that Holy Spirit will start to deal with you. And start guiding you in the direction that you're supposed to be. And you'll start to unpack and unravel the things that are being talked about. But it starts by going back to the Father and confessing to him that you did wrong. You know? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate your experience. Hey, tap in, though.